amino acids, liquid IV. Yo, what's good y'all? Welcome back to the lab. It's Monday. I wanna make this thing called Mobile Mondays. Hopefully I could follow up every Monday just dropping some mobile knowledge on y'all. For today's video, we're going to be talking about gimbals, mobile gimbals. And I've been shooting with these things for a pretty long time and I've learned some things along the way. A very common question that I get all the time is which gimbal would I recommend and which gimbal do I think is the best? Hopefully by the end of this video, you guys will get a better idea of the ones that I use on a daily basis versus the one I use in specific scenarios. These five gimbals are gimbals I've used on a daily basis and gimbals that I could vouch for. And if you're interested in learning more about some of my favorite mobile gimbals, then please keep watching. All right, you guys, so let's get started. I have right here the DJI Osmo Mobile 3. This is one of my favorite gimbals because it's actually still good. This is the third generation. Obviously we have two and one, and then we have the newer fourth generation, but this actually works with some of the bigger phones and it was one of my favorite gimbals at the time that it was out. I don't use it as much as I used to use it now, but you could get it super discounted. I've seen it on sale for even $100. And I want to run it through a series of quick little tests so you guys know what you're getting yourself into. And if you want to attach your phone to the gimbal, it's as simple as that. And then if you want to power it on, you just hit this M button, press and hold it. And what we have here is the iPhone 12 Pro. I just put it into horizontal mode just by hitting M twice. And you can also hook it up to the DJI mobile app. And each one of these Osmo mobiles actually come with one of these guys. There's a little mini tripod. You can use it for multiple things such as time lapses, motion lapses. I'm not going to go over that in this video. One of my favorite things about it is the simple fact that it could collapse and go straight into your coat pocket or maybe like a side bag that you have. So I'm gonna turn it off. And I'm gonna collapse it. Like so. Take the tripod off and then boom, put this in my, put this in my pocket and then we're good to go. So if you guys have the iPhone 12 Pro Max, something that's a little bigger, a little more heavier, this might not balance, but I just want to show you guys as an example, if it does, so you notice that it already tilts and even with the third generation, it handles it well, really well. All right, next up we have the DJI Osmo Mobile 4, and this is the upgraded version of the previous model. You get slight upgrades such as a larger payload, and one of the coolest features on the Osmo Mobile 4 is the magnetic attachment. iPhone 12 Pro Max. You just snap it on like that, and then the magnetic strip allows you to attach it just like this. Boom. And then if you want to turn it on, just hold it and boom. See, this is what probably one of the coolest parts is I could collapse it like so. Then I could just take it off. This goes in my pocket and this goes in my other pocket, just like that. And they all come with this attachment, little tripod. This allows you to do motion lapses, time lapses. I do a bunch of time lapses just like this with this setup and showing you guys how quick I could set this thing up and not worry about missing a shot. That's just probably as simple as, what, 10 seconds? And then you'll get faster as you keep doing it. This one retails at $149, which is a little more expensive than the DJI Osmo Mobile 3. But if your budget permits it, then I would highly suggest that you go with the newer model because it just allows you to have more mobility. And I think something that's cool about this, this DJI Osmo Mobile 4 could actually handle external lenses. The, I didn't show you guys on the DJI Osmo Mobile 3 because it kind of just can't do it. Uh, but the motors actually allow it. So I'm just gonna do a quick demonstration. I actually can't find my case for my iPhone 12 Pro Max, but I do have this iPhone 11 Pro Max, which pretty much weighs the same. And I have this moment case and I'm going to attach 
One of the heaviest lenses was just the 58, the telephoto lens, and it's super smooth. You don't see it going out of balance. And if you want to get those super nice tele shots on your phone, then just know that the DJI Osmo Mobile 4 allows you to do that. A very common question I get all the time is how do I shoot on ultra wide with the gimbals? Because you notice when you shoot on ultra wide, you can see parts of the gimbal sometimes because the camera is too close um, right here. All you really need to do is just slightly move it over and then it stays balanced and then you won't see the gimbal anymore. Mind, the average right now is 32. Tomorrow night, in the Wednesday morning, we'll have a uh, little bit more snow. All right, yeah, next up we got the Xeon Smooth 4. I don't know if I'm butchering the word Xeon. Right now I'm attaching the iPhone 12 Pro Max at eight ounces. You notice that it's slightly off-centered. This is an older generation of gimbal, by the way. And I'm gonna try to power it on. And let's see if we can handle it. All right, handles it. You notice I got all of my movement super fluid. And what I like about this gimbal that makes it a little different than the other gimbals is the simple fact that I have this trigger on the back that allows me to control the y-axis. So the y-axis is just pretty much the tilt from up and down. This is the same movement as the DJI Osmo Mobile 3 and 4, but when I release it, now I could go like this. And this allows for cool wall transitions, It made the list because I like it for its functionality, but for its portability, it actually doesn't really get my vote because it can't collapse down. If this thing could collapse down, I think the newer generations collapse down, but based off of, this is the one that I have. So yeah, this guy retails at $120 and it's kind of hard to get your hands on to it because it is an older model, but you could get it at a discounted price if you do find it either on B&H, Amazon, or any other reseller. All right, you guys, next up we have the Xeon M2. And this gimbal, this mobile gimbal is a little different because it's actually a lot more powerful than the gimbals that I just showed you guys. It could handle a larger payload, but it could also serve as a mobile gimbal as well. You just have to uh, use one of their attachments and rig it like so. But what I wanted to show you guys is not only can you use it as a mobile gimbal, but some of you guys who have smaller mirrorless cameras, I'm using here the Fujifilm XS10 that I recently reviewed, if you guys wanna check that out. See, now I have a full on mirrorless camera with gimbal functionality that can also serve as a phone gimbal as well, which is pretty cool. But, all right. Power it on. And boom. Now we have a phone gimbal and this also has that trigger in the back that the Xeon Smooth 4 has, just in case I want to you know, do some wall transitions. Kind of on the pricey side though, $269 for a gimbal. It's pretty expensive, but if you have the budget for it, this is primarily for y'all who shoot on the uh, mirrorless cameras. So like the Sony's, the A7's, and it also has to be the smaller lenses. You can't have the super fat 1635, 50 millimeter on there. It's Oakland, California. Let's go! 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 Let's go!
<laughs> I'm from the town like Swipe on MTV. Hanging with the thugs like Easy E. Keep her head spinning like a DVD. You know I'm uncut like BET. All right, you guys, we made it to the very last gimbal. This is my favorite out of the five, out of the whole bunch. This is the Movi Cinema Robot. It has these two clamps in the back to easily attach your phone, like so. And if you want to balance it, it's as simple as taking off the lock and turning it on right here. So this puts it into standby mode. And then when you press it again, it balances itself. I think one of the coolest features about this gimbal is the simple fact that if you want to turn it off and put it in standby mode, you just press a button and then it just goes and then you can lock it in. One thing that this gimbal does that all the others won't be able to do is control the x-axis, the roll. So being able to do stuff like this, uh, have you ever noticed some of your shots just being slightly off center? But with this, you could control how it looks and you kind of get a little more natural motion in the ocean. <laughs> you can also shoot in vertical mode just by holding it. And the battery life on this thing, as well as all these other gimbals, they last me pretty much all day, which is really nice, especially when you're shooting on mobile. The only downside to this gimbal is that it's hella expensive. This thing is $299.99, 300 bucks for a gimbal. Super pricey. Why would you get one of these instead of Osmo Mobile at $149? You get two Osmo Mobiles for the price of this guy. But it's just the, I mean, being able to control the x-axis. If you really want to take your mobile videography game to the next level, you got to reinvest your money into your production. I've been using it for maybe over a year now, and it's my favorite out of the bunch. Yeah. All right, you guys, you've made it to the very end of this video. I know this was kind of a lengthy one, but I really wanted to go over five gimbals that I really enjoyed using for the past couple of years and to share my experience with you guys. I felt like if I kept all this information for myself, I'd be helping nobody. Y'all know that I appreciate y'all for supporting my work, supporting my journey. And before I let you go, got something for you. Got a DJI Osmo Mobile 4, ready to ship for someone who, someone who's new to the game uh, someone who's passionate about storytelling but doesn't have the funds. I want you to comment your vision. Like if you won this Osmo Mobile 4, what would you do with it? And that's pretty much it. And I'm doing this because I know what it feels like to not have the resources to achieve the things you want to get to. And if I can help in any shape or form, then I'm gonna I'm try my best to do so. This is a small thing. Hopefully this like buying guide will help y'all with your decision making on which gimbal you'll get. But if you want to enter into the giveaway, I guess there's a giveaway now, comment your vision. Like what are you going to create with this gimbal and seal it off with the, I don't know, with the video camera emoji. And the winner will be selected at the end of this month. I appreciate you for watching this until the end. Hope that y'all stay safe, stay hydrated, and I'll holla at y'all on the next one. All right.